Hey, my name's James. If you're new here, I'm the owner of Matchfit Football. And what we do is we specialize in the physical development of youth footballers. In this video, I'm gonna break down how a footballer can become match fit. So for me, that is how a footballer can reach their peak level of athleticism specifically for football. And I'm gonna break down the process that my team and I have taken many, many footballers through to significantly increase their level of athleticism, their strength, their speed, their stamina, and their injury resilience specifically for football. So I think the first thing we need to do is to define what is match fitness. So I know I've given my quick definition, but I think there's a, a few things which come together here and um, just so we understand what we're actually aiming for in terms of becoming match fit. So I think firstly, it's partly a subjective feeling. So it's that feeling of being able to last a full duration of the match, not getting sore, fatigued and tired during the game and feeling that your physicality isn't holding you back. So you can do everything you want to do on and off the ball physically um, for the full duration of the match. So firstly, so we're getting that feeling that you're sort of in the zone and you physically, you're, you can do everything that you want to on the football pitch. Um, secondly, we injuries come into this as well. So we want to make sure that we're injury resilient. So it might be, it's all well and good being able to play really well and feel that you're match fit for two, three, four matches. But then if you pick up an injury every few games, you're never going to, you know, that's going to give you a setback every every few weeks. So we want to make sure that we're injury resilient as well and able to last week after week, month after month, gradually building up your match fitness and your performance level. Um, so that's the second thing. The third thing is that we obviously, we need some data to refer to, which is handy for a couple of reasons. Um, and I'd only use this data to refer to personally. It's not to compare with other players because every player is different and has different qualities on the football pitch, okay, which makes them a good footballer and an effective footballer. So what the data enables us to do is that I'd recommend when you, when you hit during the season when you're feeling like this, like you're feeling kind of unstoppable and in good physical shape, test yourself then, okay? So that's going to enable us to get the latest data and then if you do happen to get injured at any time, you can then refer to that fitness test data and know what levels you need to get back to in certain tests to give yourself a good chance of being close to being a match fit again, okay? So it's good to be able to have something to refer back to multiple times throughout the season. And we're gonna select tests which give you a good, well-rounded look at your full body um, and your all-round level of athleticism nothing is going to be just one test which is going to define whether you're match fit or not it's lots of different tests which will come together so next we need to think about what tests are you actually going to select and what are some good options which will mirror uh, football specific match fitness now bearing in mind that we predominantly work with youth footballers the test selection will mirror that so we select tests which are easy to complete have minimal equipment required can be performed in minimal space and also easy to replicate and take minimal time to, to complete the whole test uh, session as well. So with that in mind, you also want to make sure that we're covering the full body, um, all different components of fitness and a range of muscle contractions as well. So I'll give you some examples. If we're going for upper body, we might do a max press up test. So press ups, lower body, we might do a max uh, wall sit. Excuse my handwriting. Uh, a max wall sit. If we're going for um, core strength and endurance, we might do a max plank. If we're going for lower body power, uh, maybe a, a broad jump or horizontal jump. Really easy to set up. Um, excuse me, jump. Really easy to set up and measure. You might go for a vertical jump as well. Um, we might also go for, in terms of speed, a 10 meter sprint test. We could do a 20 or 30 meter sprint test, but we'll keep the distances low focusing on that acceleration because um, more uh, it's less common that a player will cover enough distance in a straight line in a football match to reach their top speed. It does happen occasionally, obviously, with fullbacks, but it's less common in compared to the impact which improving your acceleration is going to have on your athletic performance on the football pitch. So we'll focus probably on shorter distances like 10 meters. In terms of stamina and endurance, I like to go for the yo-yo intermittent recovery test level two. And that's just because, in my opinion, this mimics the nature of football more than the, the normal bleep test because it's more stop-start in nature. If you're able to work with a coach, you might also do uh, an overhead squat assessment. So that enables them to look at your posture and look for any issues in your mobility. And then that can be addressed in any program which you subsequently follow 
after your testing. So these are just examples. You can have some flexibility tests in there as well. Um, but it will give you, uh, you know, a good range of data, easy to complete. And what we also need to think about as well is if we want to retest during the season, we don't want this testing session to be one, off-putting because it's so long and two, build up loads of fatigue and soreness. So we need to keep that in mind as well when you're selecting which tests to include in your testing protocol. So now that you've got your test data that you can refer back to multiple times throughout the season, what is the process that you would actually implement to be able to increase your performance in each of, the, uh, each of those tests and ultimately increase your level of match fitness and keep pushing it higher over time? Now, this is something, a rough outline of the force, something called the force velocity curve, okay? And this essentially outlines different types of strength training, okay? So down the bottom here, we've got speed, and this is where the velocity, so the speed of the movement is high, but the force and resistances that we're working with and against are low. And then up the other end of the spectrum, we've got maximum strength work, where the force and resistance we're working against is high, but the speed of the movement is subsequently low. And what we want to make sure that we're doing is guiding players through each of these different aspects. So we've got speed, speed strength, power, strength speed, maximum strength, guiding players through all of these different aspects to make sure that we're developing a really well-rounded athlete. And when we cover each of these different elements of strength, they're gonna have different impacts into different areas of football performance. So for example, acceleration, but also um, holding off opponents and holding off the holding up the ball, going up for headers and being powerful in the air. All of these different qualities, which make a really effective football athlete, will be covered if we can do a process called surfing the curve. So what I like to do is take a player all the way up this curve and then all the way back down, but tailor it to, to their priorities and their goals and their needs. So let's say, for example, they come in, uh, maybe they're a complete beginner, but they want to focus on their speed. We might start with a, a velocity speed based block, but what we might do first is we might build a foundation of strength and stability to make sure that then when we do the, uh, the speed based uh, training block, we're going to get more out of that. Now, the thing that's really important to remember with this is that during the season, we need to be very careful about creating too much extra muscle soreness and also making sure that we uh, schedule in enough recovery time as well. So the way that we cover all these different elements of strength will be slightly different during the season to how it is in the off season and the pre-season where we can increase the training load a little bit more, have create a little bit more extra muscle soreness because, because we haven't got to juggle with team training and matches. Now also with this, let's say for example, we're doing a, a power base block where that's the emphasis that's not going to be the only thing that we need to do. We need to combine it with other elements of foot performance as well. So we might, we need to have, make sure that we've got our stamina work in there as well. Um, we're also going to be working on mobility, flexibility, general injury prevention work as well. Incorporated with this will be uh, core work to make sure that we're more efficiently able to transfer forces between the upper and lower body to aid our power. Also speed work in here too. Okay, so in terms of the strength sessions, the focus and emphasis might be on power, but that's not the only thing we're gonna be training. We need to make sure that we're also covering and combining these different elements as well. Um, at the same time as ensuring we've got enough recovery time scheduled in there. And another thing we're gonna be working on throughout is improving stability as well, because if we can be more stable, again, that's gonna help with the transfer of energy throughout the body and also um, injury resilience as well and our, our speed and our quick, quickness and agility out on the football pitch. So briefly touched on the strength side but the main thing you probably think about when becoming match fit and lasting a full match with no issues physically is your level of stamina, stamina and endurance. So I'm basically just going to walk you through what I guide our youth footballers um, to do and how we develop their stamina during the season where training time can be minimal and you wanna preserve as much recovery time as you possibly can as well. So what I, what I advise our players to do is schedule their stamina um, training to be straight after their team training session. Okay, so after team training, they're already at a facility. If they can just find a little patch of, of grass or astro, 10, 20 meters worth to the side of the pitch just to stay for an extra 10 minutes. Um, and then the advantage of that is, is that it's a time saver because they're not having to travel to another facility and um, also because they're already warm. So again, another time saver. It also means they're gonna be more resilient to injury as well because they've done, they're thoroughly warm. 
before they're doing this um, extra stamina work. Also, they're already in a fatigue state from their team training. So we've built up a level of fatigue and then we can capitalize on that by doing some high intensity, short, sharp stamina work for five, 10 minutes straight after that session. Now with this stamina work, you want to mimic the multi-directional nature of playing matches um, for a number of reasons. One, it's obviously more specific to the movements you're gonna do on the pitch. It's more specific to the muscle contractions your muscles are gonna experience and also the joint angles as well. So at the same time as developing your stamina, you're also gonna be increasing your injury resilience as well. Now, the reason I like to prioritize short and sharp stamina work, especially during the season, again, time is limited and also the most game-changing moments in matches are always moments of high intensity. So if we can become better at being able to repeat those uh, efforts of high intensity with less of a drop-off in speed, then we're gonna be able to have more impact in matches and we're gonna find that those um, high intensity efforts also less stress, uh, cause less stress to our body, the fitter that we get. Now to briefly summarize on this, there's lots of different components which come together to helping you achieve a high level of match fitness. It's not just about being able to run for a long time because if you can run for a long time but it, it get injured all the time, then you're not match fit. Or if you get pushed off the ball easily, then you're not match fit. Or if you're slow, but you can run all day, then you're not gonna have a good amount of impact in matches. So about finding a way to combine all of these because your strength is gonna impact your stamina, your speed as well. So let's say for example, if you can increase your speed, then all the, the, the speeds that you work at below your new top speed are gonna be slightly easier on your body, which is gonna have a knock-on effect to your stamina. Um, injury prevention, as we've already mentioned, if you're if you're injured, then you're no good to anyone. You need to be on the pitch for as long as you can. And actually playing matches is gonna increase your level of match fitness, obviously as well. So one of the key things is just making sure you can stay on the pitch for longer. Stability is gonna mean that you're, again, more injury um, resilient, but also increase your ability to transfer force uh, throughout the body. And every time you make uh, contact with the ground with each step, you're gonna more efficiently um, apply force to the ground as well, which is gonna aid your speed. Your mechanics are also gonna aid your speed at the same time as helping you move more efficiently, which will aid your stamina. Um, if you have uh, optimal levels of mobility, then that's gonna help with your level of uh, force output. All of these things are gonna to come together. You might have one main focus for a certain training block, but you still need to have all of, the, all of these different elements covered in a training block, in, in my opinion. This is my philosophy and how we develop our youth footballers. A final thing I wanna to touch on is what happens when you apply a new stress to the body. So you're doing a training session um, in an effort to become stronger, faster or fitter. What is the process and what is happening? So this level here, this dotted line cross here, this is your current level of fitness. Let's say you're developing your stamina and you're doing a stamina session, okay? So you start your stamina session and it's a really intense session. And during that session, you're actually, your level of fitness is deteriorating, you're stressing the body. So my fitness level is deteriorating during that session and the body finds it stressful and it thinks, right, okay, that was stressful. I need to be able to adapt so that next time I don't find that intensity as stressful, okay? So what happens is when you rest, your body will recover, and adapt and then next time your fitness level will now start a little bit higher so we're now up here in terms of your level of stamina okay and then all you do is you're just repeating this process over and over so you're stressing the body recovery time super compensation and then our stamina levels return a little bit higher again so what's really important to have in here is obviously recovery time to start with is important, which is why if you stress the body and don't allow enough recovery, then you might only get up to here with your recovery and you're gonna find that you're not, you're not experiencing this progress. What's also important is sleep, that comes into the recovery time obviously, and nutrition as well, providing the body with the nutrients it needs to be able to uh, recover, grow, and adapt to the training stimulus and the stress that you provided. The more optimal these are, okay, the steeper this is gonna be, so you're gonna be able to recover faster. The fitter you are, the more conditioned you are, also the steeper this is gonna be because your, your body can just recover more efficiently um, when you have a higher level of conditioning, which is why, let's say for example, you see a, a Premier League footballer workout 
on Instagram or somewhere on YouTube and you go and copy that workout, you have no context around what that workout is and why they're doing it. So that might be not that stressful for them, even though it might look like they're working at a really high intensity, it might only be causing them sort of this level of stress and then they just come up here and they go again. If you do that session, you might be all the way down here of the stress, only allow the same amount of recovery time that you get to here and then you do your next training session and before you find, uh, before you know it, you're training really, really hard. You're barely sleeping. You're not eating very well, but you're really into your fitness training, but you're not experiencing any progress. Um, so that's why it's a good idea just to be mindful of um, just because you see like a pro player doing it on the internet. Um, there's no, you don't have any context around that session. Um, so just be mindful that they might be actually, it might not be causing their body that much fatigue, but they can work at that intensity day in and day out and recover really quickly. Um, so just uh, one thing to bear in mind there. Um, but also we've got to think about the timing of the session, uh, making sure that we time it so that we have enough recovery time and also how it combines along other different types of training. So we might do uh, a stamina session and it bring us down here in terms of our stamina and we want our stamina to recover. So we're not going to touch stamina uh, for a few more days, or maybe even a week. We might then uh, touch on something else, we might touch just focus on our injury prevention or our strength work. And so we're causing another stress in our strength work and then that's developing at the same time. So we're constantly developing all the different components at the same time with the idea is that we're sort of gradually coming up here and increasing all of these different components at the same time. And this is how we take our youth footballers and turn them into really well-rounded athletes. At the same time, it's helping them become physically stronger. Uh, and also increasing their levels of speed and stamina because all these things combine together to have a really big impact when they're done in a smart way and we make sure that we're getting enough rest and recovery time in there as well. Now finally, what you want to make sure you don't forget to do is when you, you work really hard, you're staying injury free, you've got yourself to a new level, you're feeling great, do your retesting session because then you're going to have that new data to refer back to throughout the season and you know, okay, this is the new level that I'm at and this is what I need to be at to be able to feel confident that I'm feeling match fit. So in terms of an actual training schedule to follow, our youth footballers that we work with have a basic structure of three gym-based sessions per week, lower body focus, upper body focus, full body focus, where we're working on core and injury prevention work. Incorporated into all of that is stability work as well. In the upper body session, we're also engaging the lower body and we're engaging the lower body throughout all three sessions through so making sure we're still developing lower body strength and stability throughout the week. If we're focused on stamina, we'll have that stamina session bolted onto the end of a team training session. If we're focused on speed, we'll flip that and have it at the beginning of the session so that we can make sure that you're fresh and we can work at those maximum velocities that we need to be able to develop um, the speed side of your performance. We have a warm up and a cool down before and after every single gym session so make sure that we're covering the mobility again and the flexibility as well to optimize ourselves in both of those areas. And we have a pre-match routine where we're working on mobility and muscle activation and a recovery day routine so that we can aid that recovery process. Now with this type of thing, there are many different ways to come to the same outcome. Ultimately, it comes down to the context that the coach has, the coach's own personal experiences and what their philosophies and methodologies are as well. Um, so if this is something which you'd like to start implementing and you feel like you might want help with this, I've got two options for you footballers and I've linked them both below this video. Um, so it you know, removes all the guesswork for you and gives you a process that you can follow step by step. If you're wondering why you should listen to me, this guy's down here with crazy green sleeves on his t-shirt. Um, then you'll find information on those links about my background as well. I've been doing this for 16 years now. Um, I've also had a career and an injury that I got myself back from through strength and conditioning and trained many, many players all around the world. If you made it this far through the video, I really appreciate your time. I hope you found it really valuable and uh, any questions or comments, just post them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.